the Bible to the cross from the cross. Every Bible story has three components. First, God's law. Second, God's compassion. Third, God's miracle. Opening your Bible opens miracles. The Bible as one story is holy enough in our lives. Day 58, Deuteronomy 1-2 Recollection and reflecting about the desert journey. Moses started his farewell speech while recollecting the grace of God and the people's disobedience that were present during Exodus and the 40-year desert life. First point, two months prior to his death, Moses starts again. When God decided that the Israelites would live in the desert for a further 40 years after the incident at Kadesh Barnea, Moses wasted no time in educating the people on a kingdom of priests. In other words, the 40-year desert education was 40 years of law school for the Mana generation. The contents were exactly the same when it was given by God on Mount Sinai 40 years ago to the Exodus generation, who are now in Moab to the Mana generation. 40 years ago, Moses had listened to God's words on Mount Sinai by himself. Indeed, it must have been an honor for Moses. But teaching the people about God was just as honorable to Moses. Moses, leading up to his death, once again used his energy to start again in teaching the people. Second point. The start for the Exodus generation was Egypt, and the start for the Mana generation was Kadesh Barnea. With the Passover lamb, the firstborns of Israel were able to live in Egypt. With this began the Exodus generation. The Exodus generation were those born in Egypt and were able to fight in war. These people failed to obey God and so died a natural death in the desert during the 40 years after the incident at Kadesh Barnea. But this incident also began the Mana generation with those who were 20 years or younger. The 40 years in the desert gave time for the Exodus generation to change into the Mana generation. Third point, on the outskirts of Moab, Moses gives Joshua and Caleb a symbol of merit for their obedience. Moses praised the obedience of Joshua and Caleb and also was envious that they were able to enter Canaan. Of course, standards for Moses and Aaron as leaders of Exodus and the 40 years were a different level, and so they were not forgiven for even little disobedience. They were forbidden to enter the promised land because of Moses' disobedience, of striking the rock rather than ordering the rock to produce water in Meribah, and thus failing to show God's holiness. Moses and Aaron were unable to enter Canaan, but Joshua and Caleb were permitted to enter. Joshua and Caleb received a merit from Moses for their obedience for the past 40 years. It was indeed a proud moment for them. Even more surprising was how the last of the 600,000 people managed to pass the test of obedience. Fourth point, the Israelites are told to restrain from hitting Edom, Moab, and Ammon to heart. God had made Israel a very strong nation in the past 40 years, but God told them not to use too much of their strength on their surrounding countries. 
This was to emphasize that they were a kingdom of priests rather than an empire. Their apparent generation, the Exodus generation, had been significantly weaker than the Mana generation in three ways. First, they lived as slaves in Egypt, where they could not even fight the Egyptian soldiers when they took away their male babies to throw in the Nile. Second, they were attacked by the Amalekites who stole from those too weak and lagging behind and could not even protect themselves. And third, they considered themselves too insignificant and comparable to grasshoppers against the Canaanites. The Israel nation had grown so powerful that the surrounding countries feared them. God told the Israelites to practice peace with their surrounding countries, especially Edom, Moab, and Ammon. They were only to fight with the Canaan people. Fifth point, from this day forward, you will be feared by all. After 40 years of education, God said the following to the people. This very day, I will begin to put the terror and the fear of you on all the nations under heaven. They will hear reports of you and will tremble and be in anguish because of you. I am thrilled that you have downloaded the Tondoc app. The Tondoc app is not like any other app in the world today as well as in the body of Christ today. Dr. Biyango Zo has devoted his entire life to teaching men and women like yourself to understand the entirety of the Word of God as a masterful and beautiful story from Genesis to Revelation. Dr. Zo is a sought after speaker worldwide. He's a cutting edge pastor and leader. He is a renowned theologian and a prolific writer. And you're going to be equipped and energized like never before to understand and apply the Word of God into your life. Again, thank you for downloading the Tondoc app.